Yes, I completely agree, which is why, uh, you know, in the Trump administration, we were in the process of yes. uh, pl placing the sanctions on China Telecom. And that, that wasn't the only company, by the way. One of the things that we did at the end, when, in the last month of our administration, by the way, uh, we suspended sales of $400 billion, that's with a B, that is the correct number, $400 billion worth of semiconductor chips uh, to Huawei uh, to prevent Huawei from dominating the 5G uh, industry for the next generation. But there are a lot of other things we we're doing as well to try to slow Chinese uh, development of uh, telecommunications technology. That's a that's a great effort, and it, it'll. I'm afraid they'll try to undo it now. Uh, they've undone, undone so many things in the first six weeks. It's it's almost astounding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Stewart, I want to ask a question about our allies, so-called allies in Europe. What were our allies thinking while you were there at the Department of Commerce? Were they in joint agreement with what the Americans were doing? I doubt very much. <laughs> well, it, it, well, first of all, we all know as educated people, anybody, you know, when you understand history, uh, the, the Europeans have a history of talking big uh, yeah. and delivering nothing, right? I mean, this before <laughs> World War II, same thing. You know, talking about, you know, what was going on in Germany and yada, yada, but they never did anything about it until they were absolutely forced to. Uh, and then you got the Cold War and everything else. It was always the United States with the backbone and with the possible exception of, of the British, uh, the rest of Europe essentially being completely spineless. Now, I would say there's an exception to that rule now, uh, and that is that the Eastern Europeans who suffered under almost 50 years of, of communist domination – uh, do have backbone, and that's why you find the Czechs, the Poles, and others uh, together, uh, and other NATO allies together with the United States in, in, in fighting in certain parts of the world. But uh, there were certain nations uh, in Europe, uh, and I have to say, you know, you know, my wife's home country, Sweden, was one of them, uh, the Dutch um, in, in particular, uh, who were very, very concerned about what was going on in China, and they were very concerned about Chinese domination of 5G and other uh, communi communications technologies that are vital to the future economy uh, worldwide. Uh, and they did cooperate with us, as did uh, the Australians uh, and the Japanese and the Koreans. Uh, so there are, we do have some, some strong allies and, and who do recognize the Chinese threat. But for every one of them, there's also most of the European allies uh, would prefer to continue to sell whatever they can to the Chinese, uh, while the rest of us uh, try to do something about it and, and our allies are undermining our efforts. Can you tell us a little bit about this company, Xiaomi, the telephone company? Do you, do you know about this company, Xiaomi? Xiaomi is in Huawei. No, Xiaomi. No, I'm not familiar with them. A-M-O-Y. This was another company that was trying to mingle their way into America through China Telecom to put their products here, and they were frozen by the Department of Commerce. Were you familiar with them? Um, you know, that was probably right before uh, I entered the, the Commerce Department, but there were, there were several um, Chinese, Chinese, in fact, there was hundreds of Chinese entities uh, on the entity list, and most of those were placed on the entity list um, uh, during my time or slightly before that. But uh, so, you know, Huawei and, and uh, China Telecom are not alone. Well, I, I think also... Uh, can you? I'm, I'm sure you know the answer to this, and we do. There's not a lot of uh, American companies that can go in and do what China does here in America, right? I mean, right or wrong, you don't get the leniency of partnering as easy as you do in America or listing on stock exchanges. So the American people, they have money invested in these, let's say, these uh, funds like the Vanguard Group or BlackRock. And a lot of people may not even know that their funds are being used with companies like China Telecom where they're doing genocide. I think that's absolutely true. It is, uh, it is so intertwined. Our economies are very, very intertwined at this point. And there was a lot of talk uh, in the Trump administration, as you probably know, toward the end especially, of decoupling our two economies. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it would have been feasible, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, at a bare minimum, the Chinese need to be shamed for their repression of minority groups, for their other human rights abuses uh, that are going on in China. 
And when you shame the Chinese government and you shame the Chinese entities who are involved, you must also shame the Western nations uh, and our allies in, in, uh, in, in Asia as well. You need to shame them for doing business with them. And that is the only way you're ultimately uh, going to have any effect, in, in my opinion. Mike? Well, I think that I think that's true. Although I think Bill Clinton killed shame in America. It's no longer a very good uh, <laughs> tool to use. Yeah. But we're, the, the trouble is, who's going to call the kettle black? We are probably the greatest, um, a better of the Chinese in terms of economic help. Um, we're, the shame would fall on us as much or more than anybody else in the world if we tried to do that. I, I think, I, you know, I don't know, sir. I don't know what the answer is to this, but I know that uh, we're getting used. We're getting used by uh, politicians who are on the take from the Chinese in both parties, and we're getting used by the American business and banking community. So there's lots of problems at home that, that could be addressed within the confines of our political system that would hurt the Chinese. It doesn't necessarily have to be actions taken directly against China. But if we cut things off for them, that's going to that's gonna beggar them a little bit. Hit them where it hurts. I, I think they're, when you have a, a class of people who are racist and feel themselves superior to you, the idea that the less superior person will shame the more superior person is a little, I, I think, optimistic. You heard you could save big when you bundle home an auto with Progressive, so you went online to check it out. But then you saw a link for a survey about which type of bread you are. And now you're on question 17, barely scratching the surface of your bread identity. You always thought of yourself as a brioche, but are you actually more of a pumpernickel? Ah, yes. They said it was easy to save money bundling with Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. Now more than ever, people want to know if there's anything they can do to help. And the answer is yes at BioLife Plasma Services. Your plasma is desperately needed to create life-changing medicines to help treat people with immune deficiencies, those who are most at risk right now. When you donate plasma at BioLife, you can earn up to $700 in your first month. Check out our new St. Paul location opening March 20th or visit BioLifePlasma.com to learn more about donating plasma. BioLifePlasma.com Right. I mean, that's certainly their attitude. And, uh, you know, you have been seeing it's, it's interesting. I think ultimately the way to to I don't want to use the word, but I'll, I'll use it anyway, to contain the Chinese uh, uh, is you do have to have this broader coalition. Right. The United States can't do it alone. We do. We just can't. Um, uh, but what what we're starting to see is our European allies, especially, like I said, in in Eastern Europe, uh, and the Japanese and others who are beginning to realize that we just can't turn a blind eye to the threat that China poses anymore. And then when you begin to have this coalition of countries who's willing to do it, uh, which is the, the you know pretty much the rest of the world, and I think there's 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 an opportunity to do that, um, then then you can. Now, for example, one one of the things you can do. Uh, over time is, and I know that both you gentlemen have some experience in, in other parts of Asia, and that is that to try to undermine the Chinese manufacturing sector, uh, we can begin to divert uh, more of our outsourced, outsourced uh, manufacturing uh, from China over to other Asian uh, low-cost manufacturers such as Vietnam uh, and and others, and I think that over time that that, that can help. Now the other the other thing this has got to be this got to be a multifaceted way of trying to control and disrupt uh, mm -hmm. the Chinese. And one of the things that they've done in in, in Africa, for example, that they secured uh, all of these contracts on rare minerals and mi mineral deposit. That's why they're in Africa. They did it, you know, beginning twenty years ago or so, to in the name of hum humanitarianism. You know, look, if you give us this contract on, the, on these mineral deposits, we're going to build you a railroad. We'll build you some infrastructure, et cetera. Well, a lot of that stuff that they built was junk and it's falling apart. And now so there is resentment that's growing 
uh, in Africa as well. Uh, and I think that we should try to foment that. But it's going to take uh, an effort uh, by the United States, not just the United States, but its allies as well. Also, it's going to take an administration, I think, Mr. Stewart, that is not the Biden administration, because we are really, I mean, to go from Donald Trump, a great American trying to make America great again, and he did, um, and having people like you, strong people like you on board in agencies, and you know what a rough grind that was. I can just imagine what you went through being at the Department of Commerce as a Republican conservative working for Trump. I could just imagine what everything underneath you was looking at. But, you know, these people are so embedded for so many years within the agencies, all agencies, you know what I mean? And now we have a guy who's alleged and pretty much alleged plus, you know, dealing with China in many ways, who's our president and his son. So it's going to be a hard grind. But, you know, there's people like you still out there, Dr. Mike and I, and there's the Epic Times and there's other good networks that are trying to get the word out. And I hope to God that some of our Muslim ally countries would step into the picture, like you say. Mike? Yeah, I, I don't know why the Muslims haven't uh, haven't tried to move in there already to help the Uyghurs. The, the Uyghurs came in to fight in Afghanistan against the Soviets, so there is an, a, there's a debt there. And uh, that could be exploited by the Saudi uh, by the Saudi government, certainly, although Biden has chosen to attack this particular Saudi king for some reason. But that's again, that's a long grinding haul. And um, I, I don't know if we have the wherewithal in this country to um, exist in the same way as we did, say, when we supported the Afghans, which took 15 years. Um, the, one thing I, I would say is what the Chinese n- need to have in their mind is to be afraid of us. And right now, um, with Mr. Trump uh, temporarily, I hope, out of, out of uh, uh, the, 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 out of command, they have no reason at all to be afraid of us now. It is clear that, that uh, Biden has dropped his drawers and bent over, and along with his family and along with many other people, and the Chinese, whether rightly or wrongly, think they're in the driver's seat, and they'll drive it. They'll drive us to 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 perish. Um, they have they support and they foment all of this crap about social justice, uh, about uh, minority rule. They back uh, you know that 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 clown that was yes interviewed yesterday for uh, one of the HHS things in Congress that transgender who wants to let six year olds decide if they want to get mutilated their 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 sexual organs that they, they'll support all of that because they believe in rotting the society away that's the reason they sent so much fentanyl to this country I can for the life of me I can't understand why we have not. Uh, collared that problem with them instead of just asking them, exacting a cost for them. The the fentanyl thing, the Chinese have killed hundreds of thousands of Americans, but we've also spent billions and billions of dollars on a problem that's not fixable until you stop the inflow. So, you know, I'm an old man and I'm kind of getting more black and white as I get older, but (laughs) I can see so many handles to grab here. If we had an administration like the Trump administration was uh, and could have been spectacular in its second administration. But the, I, I fear the Chinese don't fear us enough. I, and, and that's kind of all the point I was going to make here. Uh, I, 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 I would agree with that. Uh, absolutely. I, I do think that. Um, one of the one of the points that you raised is kind of interesting, Doctor. When you raised raised the point of when I suggested that we start to funnel uh, through with our allies um, uh, small arms uh, over to the minority, minority populations in Western China to allow them to defend themselves, uh, and you 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 mentioned the idea of, of potential retribution that the Chinese may inflict on the United States, or you know what, what they might do in response. That is the same response that I got from other members of the administration when I raised the prospect of this. And but well, that's because you you have an adequate education and the rest of them don't. There's nothing you can do in this, <laughs> there, there's nothing you can do in this world off your own hook that's not going to le- yield some pain to you in response. But that's just the cost of doing business, I think, sir. Yeah. Well, 
But it's interesting because what you just said about fentanyl, um, the Chinese.